We're back with more Tower of God cut content. This is episode 8, which is the hide and seek or the tag contest. Let's see what Mr. Annie has got us for today. This is probably one of the most important of the hide and seek test is probably one of the most important events from the first season. Yeah. Especially when it comes to the test with Team A. Not only did it provide for another outlet to portray Kun's genius, but it was also intended to explain why position battles and team compositions matter. Not gonna lie, it was a mind blow session when he did that, when he just like almost won and then threw intentionally for a bomb. And I was like, this guy's thinking in, in ways that I can't even imagine. Because of the anime's heavy focus on the plot, many position defining details were excluded, some of which served to explain why certain events happened the way they did during the test. Like how Quant was able to easily dismantle this team of rookie regulars, or why Kun's perceived inexperience as a light bearer was the leading cause of his plan's overall success. Okay. So let's go through episode 8 and see what exactly we missed out on. But first. But first, today's video is sponsored by Crunchyroll. It yeah, you know what to do. Use your discount code. Any news for your first 5% off your monthly Crunchyroll subscription. Back to regular content. And today. Now, let's get back to the video. Yeah. Although the general idea of the hide and seek test was explained, there was a few more intricacies to it that made certain game changing decisions make more sense. But in order to understand why these things happened the way they did, we first need to understand the entire setup to the test itself. In terms of grading, each individual was being assessed by their own position teachers. Yeah. Then team performance as a whole was being graded by test director Yu, giving each regular two opportunities. Paracule. Paracule. This dude with the fucking hair. I can't find frame. Being graded by test director Yu. Giving each. I can't believe this motherfucker passed. It's crazy. Like, of all the characters that you see here, Paracule actually passed. What an insane world we live in. Regular two opportunities to gain points. Now, the first key thing to note was that the test area was defined by three distinct zones. A safety zone which is pretty much the starting point for each team, the seeking zone where Quant can actively hunt the it, and the exits where teams should try to get their it. The thing about this setup though is that the regulars can't have their tags stolen while in the safety zone. Quant can't do anything to any member of any team while they're in there. Yeah. That's an important thing to note for later. So with that defining the arena- Did episode 8 show this? This is episode 8 cut content by the way. And we're already seeing the hostage situation. Hold the fuck up. Now we're done Tower of God over like a week ago. Do you guys remember this shit? Did it happen in episode 8? Or is Annie just like spoiling like fucking crazy right now? I don't remember episode 8 in specific. But Ho, Rachel, this situation happens pretty near the end, right? Because like you need to have team A go first. And then Kun immediately, you know, throws it for bomb. And then Team B goes, and that, so he's, that's crazy! That's crazy that he would fucking show this, bro, in an episode 8 cut cut, this is episode 9. I am so glad we finished this before watching this, man. It's an important thing to note for later. Crazy. So, with that defining the arena, the other key aspect is the badge itself. It's designed with a sensor that immediately stops the test once touched. And if you were lucky enough to be the one to tag Quants, then as an individual you would gain 2,000 points. Keep in mind that the team itself wouldn't Zorro. receive those points. Only the person who stole the tag would. It pretty much guaranteed a passing score. Now, putting all these regulars against a ranker definitely wasn't a fair matchup. But he's nerfed. Especially if the ranker was able to use their full powers. That's why Quants options were very limited from the start. He could neither use his items nor strengthen his body. The only thing he could do was produce a single instance of Shinsu. One a bong. Single bong of One bong only. This wasn't enough to kill anyone, but it was definitely enough to put some cool scout techniques into action. Even with this handicap though, the odds still seemed pretty stacked against the regulars. The only comfort that Kun and Shibisu could find came from the fact that Quant looked to be the weakest ranker out of all of them. So, as Is they he? discussed what type of approach to take while in the safety zone, Kun began setting things in motion to achieve his master plan. First, he took leadership of his team. Then he came up with the idea to catch the ranker rather than run away. This was quite the controversial plan, because no regular in the right mind would ever think to compete against a ranker. And then, to fucking secure the win, and then throw. 
that is the my that's the crazy shit of it all because like already no one would ever even think of competing against it but we won and then we intentionally threw that is the craziest part it truly was an impossible task but what Kun knew as well was that no ranker would ever expect a regular to challenge them especially one like quant he was one of those people who had a sort of ego to them he was pretty stupid quant was an actual idiot kind of goes to show like when you're like he's a he's a ranker he's already climbed the tower with this level of intellect now i know it's like a team oriented thing but it just kind of goes to show that like intellect isn't like the most important thing it is important but like if idiots like him become a ranker it kind of gives a lot of hope for people like fucking paracule man not only that but he also hated to lose more than anything that's why this plan which was the most unexpected also had the highest chance of success Quant won't be able to expect an ambush if he literally can't fathom it existing. Mm. For someone like him, the only option the regulars have is to run away. So Kun believed that using Quant's ego against him would give them a single chance of securing Quant's tag. At least that's how Kun it wanted to almost worked in phase He one. needed to make this plan seem logical enough to convince all the others it was worth trying. And that's exactly what happened. So with Shibisu as bait, they sent him out into the dark by himself with a single lighthouse to brighten the path. One thing to note about this arena was that without a lighthouse, everything was in complete darkness. I love how the lighthouse is not only just like a computer station to get information, but it's like straight up. It's a flashlight, bro. It was intended to make navigation much harder as well as test the capabilities. I mean, it's, I mean the name is a lighthouse. What does a lighthouse do? Shine light on the boats in the ocean when it's dark and foggy, right? The light bearer. Which, if you're still confused as to what this position does, then my video that explains all of them would be super helpful. We will probably watch these videos that is not, you know, that we can watch anytime we want later when season 2 airs. Especially to give context to a lot of the other things that I'll be talking about here. For okay. example, one of the many things we covered was the device known as an observer that Shibisu was shown to be using in this moment. What? This was a very common- Yo, Shibisu looks so sick in the- is it webtoon art? For Hold example- up. One of the many things we covered was the device- Shibisu, when is this? Is he spoiling future- I mean, I, I, I guess it is, right? He just looks so much cooler here. Season 2 Shibisu? It's not that big of a deal. He got new drip, I guess, huh? He got new drip. Yeah, he looks- He looks like he's not fucking around no more, though, huh? He looks like locked in. It's known as an observer that Shibisu was shown to be using in this moment. This was a very common tool for a scout to have because An their observer. job was to deliver information from behind enemy lines to their light bearer. The observer made this job easier by transmitting visual data to the lighthouse. Cool. So Shibisu was using it as a sort of camera to try and find Quant's position. Though Quant wasn't so useless as to not know how to avoid being detected by it. He was able to sneak up on Shibisu without being seen. That being said, Quant knew from the beginning that Shibisu was just bait. Even though he figured their plan was to distract him, he still decided to fall for their trap just so that he could show how futile their efforts were. Now, and then he got played. Because it was Shibisu who was the bait, Quant decided to showcase to his student just how strong a scout needed to be in order to climb the tower. Gara. First, he Goodbye. immediately identified the potential number of threats. Then he charged forward to bait out the spare bearer's attack, which opened up a window for him to take out the lighthouse. Remember. Removing the lighthouse not only removed all lights from the battlefield, but it also disrupted the team's communications. I basically think of the lighthouse as like, if it's out, you have no more internet, you have no comms, it's basically just GG. It was practically the same thing as taking out their center of command. Yep. This was one of the key things that Quant wanted Shibisu to learn. A scout always had to deal with the high possibility of confronting a large number of enemies at the same time. It just came as part of the job of infiltrating into enemy territory. I would hate to be a scout, man. Scout, just, you're just bait. You have to go to the front lines and just like do all the fucking spying and espionage, but you are just like prime bait. It's just like, what role would I love? Lightbearer seems pretty interesting, but I don't know if I want that much responsibility. Shinsu control, right? I feel like that role is the best. Wave controller. Fisherman, spearman, they're pretty sick. It's basically melee and like frontliner, but like Shinsu control, like, Wave bearer, wave, I think that's the coolest one. So, in the case of ever getting caught, the best option would always be to remove the enemy's eyes. Not only does that- Hey, more bull. I mean, this isn't really fucking spoiling, but the bull is from, like, you know, episode, like, 11 or 12. Caught, the best option would always be to remove the enemy's eyes. Not only does that eliminate the chance of getting hit by the spare bearer's attacks, 
Yeah, of course they all control Shinsu, but the, but the wave bearer is, is the Shinsu guy, you know? But it also gives the scout the ability to choose when he wants to engage the enemy. Especially if that scout is well trained enough to be able to read Shinsu in the dark. This is exactly what Quant did in order to detect where his enemies were. And it allowed him to quickly close the gap between himself and Shibisu. A top scout doesn't need any lights? Did he say that? I don't remember Quant saying this. Maybe he did. This, this line sounds fucking amazing, though. A top scout doesn't need any lights. And then maybe Shibisu will take this learning forward and he'll be like, I don't know, like the Imus and Shadow doesn't need light anymore. Between himself and Shibisu. The thing is, this was exactly how Kun expected Quant to react. As someone who's from the 10 families, Kun is very knowledgeable on the skills it takes to become a ranker. That's why he decided to wait for Quant to believe he had the complete upper hand before finally engaging with their second lighthouse. His plan actually would have worked had Quant not used his one instance of Shinsu to activate the technique Black Fish. Black this was Fish. an advanced body reinforcement technique typically used by scouts Armor? to block out the light of a lighthouse. Okay. It removed their ability to see him without actually removing the lighthouse itself. Normally, a skilled light bearer would be able to counter this by using a reverse technique, but Kun was the fuck is a reverse technique, but like, through the lighthouse you can just like counter black fish? Is this some kind of program you run? He was still very inexperienced when it came to managing lighthouses. Currently, he could only use one at a time, or two at max if one was already stationary. Okay, so instead of just like bongs being like, you know, multiple processors for like Shinsu control, there's also multiple lighthouses you can control? You can run like five separate commands? Now, one thing about this scene was that Anak was using what's called a reel. This is often the fisherman's main weapon of choice. What it does is extend their range of combat by shooting a hook or needle towards the enemy. I thought this was just Green April doing Green April things. I thought it was just Anak's green sword just stretching. This is a needle? Generic needle? I... A reel? I mean, it just looks like a fishing rod, and that's the whole theme of it, but like... I thought this is just Green April stretching, as it does. A reel? It makes it sound like every weapon can also do this. Every needle. What it does is extend their range of combat by shooting a hook or needle towards the enemy. By attaching the Green April to the end of her reel, yeah. Anak was able to use Shinsu to freely manipulate the line and attack from a distance. Okay. What we saw Anak do was actually one of the main offensive patterns that fishermen tend to use. It mainly consists of establishing control of the high ground, then using the reel to inhibit their opponent's movements. The reason for this isn't so much as to eliminate the opponent themselves, but instead to give the spare bearer more openings to land attacks. Hey, stop spoiling and future episodes! Are currently the only two regulars capable of using this type of weapon. But unfortunately, Anak was neither fast nor skilled enough to beat the reaction time of Quant's scout instincts. This made Quant believe that he'd been underestimated. And as we saw, he didn't really like that very much. And then the ultimate humiliation of him being told by Kun that, hey, you can go win now after we won. And then he told him another tip too. There's one more thing. There's one more thing where he said, I think it was tipping off what's going to happen with Rachel and Ho, I think. Everyone thought that he was going to violently end the test right there. But instead, he mercifully gave them a second chance. It wasn't just a 100 second grace period though. He actually gave them a full 32 minutes and 13 seconds to try wow. and get to the exit. Not only did this show how big of an arena this test was being held in, but it also showed that Quant knew exactly how long it would take for Anak to get near the exit. Oh, I thought that whatever amount of seconds that he said was just like a trivial amount. I was like, that's very specific, but that was exactly how long it would take. He made sure to give himself ample time to not only catch Anak at the bridge, but also stop along the way to give all the other regulars a lesson on why he's the best. But here's where Kun's genius begins Is to Is he shine. really the best? We already know that the way Team A's test played out was completely in accordance with Kun's plan. However, Lidodo couldn't understand what the big picture was. The only thing mm -hmm. he could see was the absurdity of a regular trying to take on a ranker. Especially since that regular was someone who was from the 10 families. On the other hand, Yu was able to see past this, Han and he found Kun to be taking the test rather well. He knew that the whole logic behind using Quant's ego against him was just stuff that he made up to get his teammates to go along with his plan. Yeah, because at the end of the day, the boys that needs to pass is already passed, right? We have our list of people. Passing this test means fucking nothing to us. As long as Bomb passes, that's all that matters to him right now. If he didn't, then things wouldn't have gone so well for him. 
I think it's worth pointing out though that at no point during the webtoon did they make it seem that this was the case. Other than what you had said as a hint, we were made to believe that Kun was genuinely trying to pass the test the entire time. Okay. It went to make the reveal of his betrayal that much more shocking. I think the anime did a pretty good job too. I, there was not a point where, like until like Quan got dropped off, there was not a single point where I, I was like, yo, is he trying to do something else? There was never a moment like that. I was like, damn, we're about to win. We're about to win. Then he's like, he threw. And I'm like, what's going on? And it's like, oh, bounce on the other team. That makes a lot more sense. Anyway, after about 31 minutes, Kun's team chose to lead Anak to an exit that would force Quant down a narrow passageway. That way they would have two opportunities to ambush him. One of these was in the stairwell similar to what we saw in the anime. And the way it played out was pretty much the same. Though, the reason that Quant was able to continue to hide in the dark was because he still had his bang dark active fish. from when he used Blackfish the first dark time. Dark Blackfish. He never got rid of his first activation of Shinsu. So, he was just reusing it to hide his body from the lighthouse once again. Okay. This let him walk right into the ambush without getting spotted. The only thing the regulars could do now was just attack at random, which really only just made it easier for Quant to pick them off one by one. The scene with Quant fighting Amigo was intended to show just how much a spare bearer would be at a disadvantage if they tried to fight at close range. This guy's pretty interesting because like he did pass the test with us at the very end. He ascended, but I know like nothing about him. Wonder if he's going to be important for season two. Scouts typically have the fittest body out of all the positions, so it would be very easy for a scout. That's funny to imagine Shibisu being the most fit of everyone in his team. Because he's a scout, just can't imagine that. ...to take on a light bearer or spare bearer in a one-on-one. -on -one. However, when a light bearer and spare bearer worked together, well, that's when a scout would be in trouble. If the scout ended up in a position where they were spotted, the spare bearer could combine their power with the light bearer's lighthouse to hit a target okay, from dozens more, of kilometers away. More positioning things? It was a things? very deadly combination technique, but that was something far too advanced for any regular to do on the floor of test. Right now, Kun's team was simply getting toyed with, Especially when Quant snuck up behind Shibisu for the second time. This whole encounter was stretched out the into back a scene that actually went to further develop Shibisu and Anak's relationship. Oh? It was after realizing it was impossible to beat Quant to the exit that Anak figured it'd be best to just try and fight him in a more open area. To her, fighting on the bridge would have been a guaranteed loss. At least with a bit more room, she could try and put up a fight. That's when we see Shibisu trying to hold Quant back so that Anak could make it to the exit. Did Anak feel like, wow, she actually cares about me? Aside from his weird comments. Run my cutie. This daddy trusts in you. <sighs> Cringe. Ooh, I don't think Anak really cares about What Shibisu was trying to do was show Anak that it was okay to rely on other people. Yeah. You see, Kun had told Shibisu that Anak was hiding something from the rest of them. He didn't know what exactly it the was, backstory. but he wanted Anak to know that he would be there to help her if he could. Aww. It was honestly a pretty wholesome speech. She basically just wants to be Anak's stepdaddy, man. What a nice guy. Up until he started spewing his garbage again. Yeah. Nevertheless, his words did seem to resonate with Anak as she decided to make a dash for the exit again. I would like to think that by the end of season one, Anak, Shibisu, Hats, they're homies. I feel like Anak and Shibisu, their relationship, even though it may seem like she doesn't care and that she might be shitting on him, that there is some level of respect and camaraderie between them. So, as Shibisu held onto Quant's leg, he tried to make an opening for First Emperor to use his scorching fist of death. Don't let him- his name is First Emperor? I, I didn't know his name was First Emperor, but like, this guy, his Inferno's punch, bro. Don't let him charge this shit. We still haven't seen it be used yet. It's been off screen every time. I just hope. Did he pass? I don't think he passed, right? I don't. Rem no, I don't. I don't. I don't think he passed. So we're not gonna see him in season two, huh? Man, I. I hope that this meme charging, you know, the fucking fire punch would actually pay off one day, but uh, we'll see. At least by being a minor inconvenience, Shibisu could prevent Quant from using his blackfish technique to hide. It got to the point that Quant was getting rather annoyed by it. The only reason he hadn't killed any of them so far was that he didn't want to be responsible for any of their deaths. Sure, this may have sounded cool to Quant when he was saying it in his head, but saying it out loud just made Lerodo and you laugh at him. What you said was good, great Quant, you're amazing. Ah ha 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 ha. And then a kid died. But, you know what? I feel like 
He deserved it. Ho oh, sucks. Still no empathy from me. Nope. So, with Quant's patience now running low, he decided to just ignore all the other regulars and head straight to Anak. Based on her current position, she would need at least 15 more minutes to make it to the exit. Kun knew that this wouldn't be enough time. He had to think quickly if he was going to come up with a plan to beat him. Though, fooling Quant wasn't going to be so easy. But it was, or at least it seemed like it was easy. There were a couple things that made his story seem as if it was a lie. The first was the obvious bait to make him jump off the bridge. The second was the presence of only a single lighthouse. Double Quant lighthouse! Quant was aware that Kun was capable of using two lighthouses. So, the presence of only one led him to the conclusion that the other was being used as an object for Anak to stand on. Okay. It was a very standard tactic to use the lighthouse as an object. It's what was taught to the light bearers in their classes. That's why Quant was able to figure it out so easily. That's actually one of the coolest things about the lighthouse usage, about... It just seems like a computer room where it's like commanding, you know, communication and stuff, but it can also just be used as a foothold to just like float on, so... I always thought that's kind of unique. Now, because Quant believed this to be an oversight on Kun's part, he decided to give Kun a lesson on the lighthouses themselves. Okay. Aside from being a cube that... L, 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 terrible character, terrible character. ...emits light, gathers information, and transmits commands, the lighthouse itself was a device made from suspendium. What? A special type of mineral that floats in Shinsu. The more a pure this ore, the more buoyant it would be, and that it would floats. result in a higher quality lighthouse. Though, the same could be said for pockets and inventories as well. Okay. They can float too because they also have suspendium in them. That's kind of cool. Buoyancy. Suspendium material, that's how they float. Now explain to me how they just disappear in space. And just as you'd expect, the higher percentage of pure suspendium a device has, the more expensive it will be. Okay. That's why the lighthouses- I don't think we even know the currency system in the tower so far, because in the testing area, it was all through this point system, but I doubt that's gonna be consistent after we move out. I thought the points is just basically through our like, it's basically like going to college and having like a meal card just get loaded up. ...is that regulars like Kun possess are often made with such little suspendium that they need to be kept afloat via Shinsu manipulation. What this means is that lighthouses can only be kept afloat within a certain radius of their light bearer. If that light bearer loses consciousness or moves out of that radius, then their lighthouses will end up falling. That was Would that hurt if they just fell from a high... It's like a car crash, just car being dropped from the sky. The basis of Quant's reasoning to jump with Kun. He would force Kun out of his radius of control, which would in turn cause Anak to fall alongside them. Mm -hmm. This would then give Quant the opportunity to grab her tag. But here's where a significant Psych! change was made to the anime. One that- Anime and webtoon difference here? Okay. Sort of diminished the level of planning that Kun put into this. Using his bag, Kun was able to hide that he'd been secretly hanging on to the other lighthouse the entire time. Using his bag, he hid Anak? How does that make sense? Egg, Kun was able to hide that he'd been secretly hanging on to the other lighthouse the entire time. Because she was in the bag? But it's like an elevator, they're kind of linked. But it was in the bag. But it needs to. It needs to loop around the bridge at the top. I'm not understanding how the fuck this works here. Egg, Kun was able to hide that he'd been secretly hanging on to the oh. other lighthouse the entire oh. time. Okay. Now, how he did that was what's important. Kun was using a high quality item known as a pulley. Okay. Just like his bag, it was something that he stole from his father's personal treasury. That hasn't been explained yet, but I'm actually. Get I was wondering where the fuck. Because they never explained the bag, right? They never ever once explained, like, where the fuck did he get the bag from? And then there was some hints through the dialogue with his brother that he meets later on, right? I think it's his brother, or at least one relative from the Kun family. And then he was kind of hinting, like, oh, you know, the bag is like our family, like, jewel or something, but okay. An item suitable to be used by rankers because the pulley was made from pure suspendium. Pure suspendium? Because of this, it allowed for it to be easily set up and manipulated within Kun's field of Shinsu control. Cool. The pulley's rope could also be extended in either direction at the user's discretion. So, well before Quant had arrived, Kun tied one end of the rope to his bag and the other end to his lighthouse. He then kept both the rope and the pulley in invisible mode and waited for Quant to jump. And then Anak was also in the bag while the suspendium stuff, the pulley already kind of simulated the elevator, and then we pulled Anak out of the bag, and then it's like, boom, that's how we did it. So, it wasn't something as simple as Anak using her green April to save Kun. 
And just so that this item doesn't seem too random, we've actually seen it used once before. Back what? when Bam had to tempt Endor to see by Dan. That was important? The food? The... Okay, so that was pure suspendium being used here too. Playing food in front of her. After this was just the whole reveal. I guess like explaining what a suspendium is is kind of like too much little details that you don't really need to go to. So the anime decided to just, you know, use something that's a little bit more intuitive. You know, Anak's got Green April, let's just use that. Yeah, I, I guess it makes sense. ...about Kun's master plan. But before the second test would begin, there was a small break in between so that each of the teachers could evaluate Team A's performance. Based on what they saw, every person there performed about as well as they expected them to. Okay. Well, everyone except for the light bearer who performed exceptionally well. Mm. Though, Lidato wasn't so sure whether to give him a good grade or not. Unlike the other rankers, Lidato was the only one to see that Kun helped Quant get back on the bridge. Yeah. Surely this betrayal All of his part team of the plan. was something that warranted a deduction of his points. Yet, he still couldn't easily dismiss the fact that Kun's prowess as a light bearer was extraordinary. It's like, these kids in high school where it's just like, they could easily get a hundred on the test, but intentionally just fails the test. And the teacher's like, shit, I feel like I should still give him a high mark because I know how cracked he is. That's when you had to point out that Kun didn't betray his team at all. He just made the rather mm -hmm. shocking choice to put his own journey on the line in exchange for helping another's. The thing is, Kun should know very well that climbing the tower requires sacrifice. It's an unavoidable truth that you're going to have to leave behind your heaviest burdens. Yeah, you know what the heaviest burden right now is? Rachel in that fucking fake-ass wheelchair, dude. She can walk. That, that, that means throw her off the tower. Climb to the top, then throw her off the tower. Wheelchair and everything. If that was the case, then why was it that Kun made the choice to keep one of them? It just didn't make sense. Out of all the things that Kun's plan was, you found it most of all to be arrogant, and it seemed to bother him in a way that Lidado couldn't quite understand. Kun being arrogant, I agree. Arrogance is a pretty good trait to characterize Kun. What else? Confidence. Arrogant. Prideful? A little bit. He's also very empathetic towards Bum because they share the same kind of problem with Maria and Rachel. Arrogant? I feel like arrogance... It's a fine line between being super confident in yourself, but also being a little bit too confident where it becomes like cocky and now you're being arrogant. But that's pretty much the majority of episode 8. Next week we'll cover the second test as we get into episode 9. Yeah. And if you still happen to be confused as to what the positions are and what they do, then be Don't sure to worry, check out my last we'll video. Don't worry, we'll check out. Yes, we will check that video out on a different time, but it is what it is. Here it goes. Guys, we'll like the video. Subscribe to the channel if he hasn't. I still can't get over how he's just spoiling shit just left, right, and center. I wonder how many people are complaining about, you know, the future episodes getting spoiled, but it's probably us that's only being so anal about this. Anyways, go, go fucking like this channel. We're going to react to the rest of the episode cut content, and then there's some other content that we can cover that's not episode cut content, more like light bear positions and more lore of the tower that we can do any different time. So that's that.